ultimately the challenge makes it all well worth it at the end of the day when you you know when you succeed and become successful i don't think it would be right if there was no hiccups at all you know what i'm saying or whatever so i can honestly say i've been a part of uh, some great years of being an owner of a restaurant i can always say that when i look like no matter what happens from today moving forward well, first and foremost, happy belated birthday. Thank you. I appreciate that. You are so, so welcome. Virgo season. I had to had to sprinkle that in there before we get started. So, you know, Pepsi is bringing, is giving back in a really, really big way by supporting Black-owned businesses, highlighting them, mentoring them through the Pepsi Dig-In program. And your restaurant, Escobar, is supposed to be joining the residency program this year. Right. So can you tell me a little bit about what it means to be a part of this residency as a business owner and just overall? I think it's big. I already had a, a residency in Vegas performance. So to actually have one of my businesses making their rounds, I think it's just a blessing, man. And it's great. That's a great initiative that Pepsi Dig In is doing. This is the second year. Um, I'm two changed. I think it aligns. We got the, we had we had to link up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I, I've been um, running a I've been an owner of a, a restaurant for going on seven years. And 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 Lord knows that's a lot um, in the black restaurant field, you know, with so many ups and downs, trials and tribulations, you know, it's a, it's really a roller coaster. So, you know, I can honestly say it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be acknowledged along with the other uh, five restaurants. Um, and um, for foodies, you know, Vegas is one of those places that is just, you know, it's uh, overflowing with uh, tourists and people that are just curious about, you know, what to do, what to see, or what to eat. So I'm just happy to be a part of that whole equation. Amen. You actually brought up, you know, that you've been in the restaurant business for going on seven years now. Can you take me back to, you know, the beginning of ESCO and just building it up to be Escobar and all that it is today. I know you guys have franchises now. You have all these different variations. Tell me a bit about it. Yeah, Escobar started really over maybe nine years ago. Uh, I was acquiring a bunch of um, land around Atlanta, residential and commercial, just stacking up properties. Just, you know, man, started early with that vision, maybe 2012, 2013. I was approached by a young lady by the name of Snoop Diller who wanted to actually rent out my facility for something that she was already doing and actually growing out of. Man, we had several business meetings. Um, you know, talked over some numbers and soon became partners. You know what I'm saying? She's, you know, very intelligent, very passionate in that field. From then on, we came up, you know, with the, uh, I came up with the name, uh, concept, ideas, you know, started putting these dishes together, started coming up with the vibe and what the vibe looks like and feels like. And um, it's just been a, it's been, it's been a, it's been a long seven years, but like I say, man, it's been some really good times within those, within that, that time period. You know, I heard that you called yourself more of like the marketer, that side of things. What mm. was uh, what was the inspiration behind the name Esco? Well, man, I was playing off really rap, right? Because it was like a bar and I'm it's like Esco was known to be like dope. You know what I'm saying? So it was like a dope bar, a dope facility or something right. like that. So it was more like it was more metaphoric in, in, in my presentation and something that kind of like you can use a concept and just kind of play, you know, you know, play with it and play under it. You know what I'm saying? And so that's how the name really came. It was just me trying to put words together. And, um, you know, we here now with a couple of franchises and franchisees and everything. So you were being a lyricist, even in your Absolutely. Absolutely. Heard you, heard you, heard you. <laughs> so, you know, you mentioned Vegas is a really hot food spot. You know, I'm curious, are you, would you consider yourself a foodie? Absolutely. I'm, I'm one of the reasons people got chefs. I think I was someone that was early in this field of, you know, hiring somebody to cook me healthy food. I feel like what you put in your body is what you get out performance wise. So I was someone that, you know, hired a chef very early on um, in my music career. I used to highlight dishes with a big, you know, Versace plate, all these different yeah. exotic dishes. It used to go viral. And then um, just in, Bieber stole my chef. And then I had to get another one. Oh, man. <laughs> well, he didn't steal them. He, he borrowed them. He okay. borrowed them. You got him back. For, yeah, he's back. But for me, <laughs> but for me, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get mad or jealous because I felt like, 
this is what I'm here for. You know what I'm saying? I'm like a bridge to, you know, put people on, turn people up. Amen. And so, you know, I'm saying that to say that I've been, you know, this is not an industry that I'm just getting my foot wet in. I've always, you know, kind of been someone that's, you know, traveled the world looking for the best meal and the best few other things. But during this conversation, the so best then, meal. So what would be the best thing you think you've eaten thus far? In like period? Oh. Period. Like it could be the craziest thing. It could be the best thing. Like whichever one comes to mind first. You know that's hard, girl. <laughs> I gotta ask. But but it's in the seafood lane, though. I know, you know, I've had some really good Branzino. I have some really good miso card. Mm -hmm. I had some, you know, ultimately some good, you know, sea bass, you know. So I'm a I'm a seafood person. Okay. And, you know, if you know how to prepare, you know, you know how to pre prepare some of that stuff the right way, I'm 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 sitting down at your table. Awesome. So my last question for you is, you know, you mentioned you're two chains, you're known in the music industry, and now you're in the restaurant business entrepreneur lane. What has been the most surprising thing that you've learned in this journey with entrepreneurship? Food is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Food is expensive. Uh, getting good help and on the same page is rare, mm -hmm. but ultimately the challenge makes it all well worth it. At the end of the day, when you, you know, when you succeed and become successful, so um, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't. I don't think it'd be right if there was no hiccups at all. You know what I'm saying, or whatever. So I can honestly say I've been a part of uh, some great years of being an owner of a restaurant. I can always say that when I look back, no matter what happens from today moving forward. Thank you, thank you so much, Two Kings. Thank pleasure. you. Thank you.